chip will send the data to the antenna and then through the um, electromagnetic wave and be read, read by the reader. Another special feature of Telecar is uh, uh, it has got a very high speed transaction which only takes about um, 0.1 to 0.3 seconds for each transaction. So this is the step of um, how Telecar works. First, the data stored in the tag of the um, card will be, uh, will be read by the reader. And then the antenna, the antenna of the card will receive the electromagnetic wave from the reader. And then it will be charged with electricity. And then, um, uh, and then after being charged, um, the data will be sent back to the reader through the electromagnetic. And it, it use the same channel. And when you send the electromagnetic wave to core, the data, the data will be sent back to the reader through the electromagnetic wave. And, um, and then the reader, after receiving the information, it will store it in the, in the hoist computer and wait for sending back to um, clear. This is um, the diagram shows how it works. And this, these are the tag ICs which store it, the information. And then um, after the reader sends signals, to retrieve the information stored in the text, and then they will send back the um, information to the reader, and the reader will uh, put the information into the host computer. So now we we'll talk about the security. It uses mutual authentication for encryption. It, so that means it's based on shared secret keys by uh, between the card and the reader. And <clears throat> it uses symmetric key for encryption and decryption, so it's faster and less complicated. And then uh, it's dynamically generated every time um, which also authentic authentication is performed. And it, this uh, helps in preventing fraud, for example, impersonation. And also it uh, uses different keys for different areas. And this is a uh, simple, simplified, uh, simplified steps of, of the authentication. And first, uh, the reader who sends uh, KA encrypted by RA to the card and expect uh, K. KB with the KA. <laughs> 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 and then this how is that uh, the card uh, this one the card will will send KB and put it by K, uh, RB and then and it's expecting KA with RB and then so the subsequent messages are encrypted by RB and. And also, uh, this is the, just the encryption process. And then, actually, Octopus got use, uses the uh, 3DES to for encryption for for encryption, uh, which comprises of like 3DES K1, K2, and K3. And then, um, yeah, the communication is again like randomly is is encrypted by randomly generated key. So it's uh, and then the key can be assigned to. Uh, cards to safeguard against security attacks. Yeah. Finally, we come to how the Octopus card is applied in our daily life. So it's mainly divided into payment and other uses. And for payment, we use it for retailing, buying things in 7-Eleven, and then uh, for leisure facilities, transportation, parking, like the um, parking slot on the street, and also self-service, like vending machines and stuff. And then for the personalized Octopus card, we can use it for um, access control for commercial and residential buildings. Like a, a lot of like my residential building is also like starting to use that. And then also schools sometimes use it for taking attendance and stuff. And so we believe the Octopus card could be developed into many other uses later on in the future. And um, uh, yeah, for example, for uh, boarding pass, e-money, internet, internet transactions, etc. So here's the end of our discussion and hope this makes you understand a little bit more about the Octopus card.